Don't click off this video. You've read the title correctly. It's not a mistake. Lord Voldemort is one of the most infamous villains of not just the Harry Potter universe, but in general fiction. He's kind of like the Darth Vader of the Wizarding World, just committed to atrocity after atrocity. He cared about nothing and nobody but himself and everything he did was for his own gain. I've made videos on the worst things he's done and the biggest mistakes he's made, but then I sat and thought, did Voldemort actually ever do anything nice? Right off the bat, I couldn't think of a single thing, and I mean that after being a lifelong Harry Potter fan and basically knowing the franchise inside and out, I couldn't work out one nice thing he did. So then I did some research, evaluated certain situations and relationships he had with certain individuals, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I found five nice things that Voldemort did. So let's kick it off with number five. He freed Lucius Malfoy from Azkaban. Voldemort was absolutely furious with Lucius for not only his failure to retrieve the prophecy, but also the fact that it was destroyed, meaning he never learned the full extent of it. It was borderline unforgivable for Lucius and something he would go on to heavily punish him for, even setting Lucius' son Draco up to fail with his assassination attempt on Albus Dumbledore. Anyway, after the Battle of the Department of Mysteries, Lucius was captured and incarcerated in Azkaban prison. His name and face was was splashed all over the Daily Prophet. His reputation was destroyed and it was a complete and total embarrassment for Draco. Voldemort had no intention to ever free Lucius from Azkaban. He rendered him utterly and totally useless, and he wanted to leave him there to rot for the remainder of his life. It was only on Snape's protest that the Dark Lord changed his mind and freed Lucius. I'm just going to repeat that. He did it on Snape's protest, or more like request. Voldemort had a great amount of respect for Severus, and this was his way of rewarding him for his loyalty to him. Snape had a very good relationship with Lucius, which is why he requested the release in the first place, but all the same, Voldemort granted it, and it's something nice he did for Snape, and something nice he did for Lucius. It does make sense if you think about it. Number 4. He didn't punish the Death Eaters. On his return to power towards the end of the Goblet of Fire, Voldemort called his Death Eaters to his service for the first time in over 13 years. Every single Death Eater who bore the Dark Mark tattoo would have felt the burn on their arm, which indicated that they must come to him. The Death Eaters that didn't show were dealt with, that's not a secret by any means, but the Dark Lord was still not happy with those who returned to him as they had shown no interest or attempt in trying to find him in order to help him return to power. He scolded them all at the graveyard and aired his biggest disappointment with Lucius Malfoy, as it was clearly evident to him that there were signs of the Dark Lord's presence and Lucius simply ignored them. However, with that being said, Voldemort did nothing. He didn't punish them, he let it go. Probably because he knew he needed them, but his reputation was so fierce that it was widely thought or widely believed, even that anyone who even remotely showed any disloyalty would be swiftly dealt with. Not in this case, he accepted his Death Eaters back into the fold and all went without punishment, all except the ones who didn't show at the graveyard. Number three. He was kind to Ginny Weasley. A big portion of Voldemort's soul lived within the diary Horcrux, but it's important to note that it was placed there when he was just 16 years of age, and basically a lot different to the Voldemort we got after he rose to power. During his Hogwarts years, Tom Riddle was more keen to give a listening ear or to have a thorough conversation, even if he didn't fully want to. He still feigned genuine interest, which in turn made the recipient feel better about themselves. He'd done this with Ginny Weasley when she needed someone to talk to. Ginny was increasingly frustrated with the many aspects of her life and poured her heart into the diary. Despite Tom's intentions, he still replied to Ginny, still advised her and in a way, he helped her cope. Yeah, he was only doing this to steal her life force and regain his full form, but his actions, albeit feigned, still helped. It's just another difference between Tom Riddle and Lord Voldemort. They were two completely different people. As he grew in power, Voldemort didn't abandon the name of Tom Riddle on its own, but also everything that the name and the person represented. He no longer needed the power of persuasion, you could say, which I think is slightly disappointing because it's what made the Tom Riddle character so appealing. Number 2. 
he spared Lily's life. Okay, technically he didn't spare Lily's life, he killed her straight up, but let's just rewind back for a moment. I've said a couple of moments ago that Voldemort valued Snape greatly and that's true. When Snape had first come into his ranks, he stood out pretty quickly for his knowledge and skill with a wand. He showed his value. Voldemort recognised this and also recognised Snape's loyalty. After all, Severus came to him and told him about the prophecy in the first place. He was really invested in becoming a Death Eater. However, when he discovered that the Chosen One was actually his all-time greatest love, Lily Potter's son, that's when Snape began to panic. You see, he could live without not speaking to Lily again. They were now on opposite sides anyway. But what he couldn't deal with was being directly responsible for her death, which he kinda was. He pleaded with Voldemort to spare her life and the Dark Lord accepted his request. Although he didn't value love or have any compassion, he did understand that it wasn't the case for everyone, and even someone as loyal as Snape. Voldemort was true to his word. He gave Lily more than one opportunity to stand aside. He was sparing her life, knowing he was about to kill her son, knowing that she would try to come after him or be some sort of an enemy in the future, he was still willing to spare her for Snape. Unfortunately, Lily refused and she was killed, but it showed that despite being known as a tyrannical maniac with a devastating, ruthless approach, he still rewarded his followers within his ranks who offered loyalty and value. Number 1. He was kind to Horace Slughorn Horace Slughorn and Tom Riddle had quite an established relationship. Many of you are already aware that Slughorn relished in discovering and nourishing talented students in the hope that he would one day be rewarded by them in whatever field of work they fell into. He also loved to brag about being able to teach the very brightest students. One of those minds was Tom Riddle. The boy excelled in potions class and was looked upon as the greatest student to walk the halls of Hogwarts since Albus Dumbledore. He had many conversations with his professor with Slowcorn even commenting that he expected Tom to go on and become the youngest ever minister for magic within 10 to 15 years he estimated. Tom would even bring his teacher pineapple as a thank you gift for the conversations they would have. It's not really a hidden secret that Tom always had an ulterior motive but it doesn't change the fact that the quality of their conversations was always at its peak. Slughorn even confirmed to Riddle all that was necessary to create a horcrux, something he deeply regretted as he knew that it was in no way academic on the student's behalf. However, with that being said, Voldemort respected everything that Slughorn represented. He knew that he was the only person who could have known about his horcruxes and he'd done nothing, he left him be. Even when he did seek out his old teacher, it was to offer him a teaching post at Hogwarts. So it shows that Tom did value everything the man taught him. There you have it guys, 5 nice things Voldemort done. Trust me when I say, that wasn't easy at all. Thanks for watching, give the video a like and I'll see you all for the next one.